Last year, my wife and I rented an RV and drove across the country to go hiking and camp at the Grand Canyon. We drove over 3,000 miles through 12 states in only seven days, and it was awesome. I'm Chris Adler. This is the Adler.tv show, and every week I host and post a new podcast with a new guest in a new location. This week, my guest is Aaron Adler. Hello, wife of mine. Hello, husband of mine. So this is Erin Golden Adler. She is my wife, and she is um, my guest this week on the show. And we are at our home. Oh, my gosh, there's a dog hair on your microphone. Well, that's just it's occupational your... hazard. There you go. Yeah, you might hear uh, throughout this podcast dogs <gasps> clicking and clacking all around. I didn't realize he was... Yeah, we got a dog named Kevin underneath us and a dog named Franklin. Oh my gosh, what good boys. Underneath us Hello, too. Franklin. Please don't step on that plug switch, Franklin, if you do. His tail's going to knock something. Be sad, out. yeah. So, um, yeah, we're at the house today and we're going to talk about our RV adventure that we took last year to the Grand Canyon from Birmingham, Alabama to the Grand Canyon and back in a Class B camper van all in seven days, right? Yeah. Okay. Saturday to Saturday. And I should say that we paid for all of this out of our own pockets. Oh, yeah. Uh, none of this is endorsed. This is not a, like an endorsement deal. None of it at all. Mercedes-Benz, I'm going to talk highly of them. And Outdoorsy, I'm going to speak highly of them. Mm -hmm. All of the national parks, foundations, and all that stuff, we're going to speak highly of them too. But yeah, all, of this, all of this, <laughs> easy, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess we should say what we do. I'm a teacher, an English teacher, <laughs> high school English teacher. I am a teacher. <laughs> I teach children. <laughs> Learning is my business. Uh, that's honestly probably how they see me. Um, but Well, you keep a professional air about yourself. Anyway, yeah. yeah, you're very I'm kind of a brick wall, yeah. You are. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what allowed us to be able to have the time. I mean... Your job gives you a spring break sometimes or like a week long break in March and obviously and it lined up with you and it lined up with mine. Yeah. And um, we got, went through the website outdoorsy.com. Uh, initially, I think we just Googled RV rental and it took us to rvshare.com. Mm -hmm. Is that right? rvshare.com. Yeah. And then um, we also found outdoorsy.com. And in fact, some of the listings that we saw on both websites we would inquire on one website and they would send us to the other. So we ended up sticking with outdoorsy.com uh, because they evidently have a better like insurance program and better billing and that kind of stuff. So the Grand Canyon thing though, do you remember why the Grand Canyon? I remember why that. Because you you hadn't been? You hadn't been. Well, I thought I hadn't been, but it You had been? Out, I had turned Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember we talked about this with my mom like I found out that when I was really, really young, I had been, but I didn't realize it was the Grand Canyon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just learning this information. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the whole time, <laughs> I thought, it was I, like thought I had romantic, been. like no, it <laughs> was. <list> it was <laughs> romantic and it was bucket list. But then, like later, I remembered. Oh yeah, I did do this when I was like six, and just totally forgot. And like, I would. We went to Arizona a ton when I was really young, because that's where right. my mom's parents lived. So we went to Arizona all the time. And so just like, I thought it was just another Arizona trip. Like, <laughs> oh, that's a cool ditch. <laughs> you know, like, I just didn't get it as a kid. I didn't understand it. I didn't know. Right. Well, I didn't yeah. know. Right. So that's true. I mean, I, I saw it. I was like, what, 15 when I saw it. And I mean, it was okay, like, so you had been too. Right, I, you knew that. I told you that. A million I times. thought you had never been. No, I had you been. Literally even in the pride when you saw it with us two, you literally yeah, cried. Yeah, because I thought I was having like a big bucket list moment with you, and I find out that <laughs> you had been when you were fifteen. I said that a million times. I was like, "This is not the road that my dad and I came in." I said it so many times. Okay, well, I told you that I had seen it, and I just forgot. But I didn't remember until way after, and all and seeing all those things over and over again, I was like. Wait a second. And then I, I uprooted some memories. Well, I'm glad that we did it together. Oh, I am too. And it was super <laughs> awesome and super special. Seeing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing the Grand Canyon with you. I, yeah. don't, I didn't want you to think it wasn't. No, I know. I know. I know. Okay. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. You cried when you when we saw it. I, and I almost cried. I really don't cried. want to talk about that. I almost <laughs> cried. Well, it's in the footage and I'm going to show it. So it's not like it's not going to come out. It's so embarrassing. 
we knew the dates and we knew what mm -hmm. we wanted to do, but we didn't know what kind of RV we wanted to rent. Uh, there are a few different kinds of RVs that are Class A, B, and C. Uh, class A camper vans are like the big giant tour bus that you see. Like it's as big as like a Greyhound bus. Uh, those are Class A. Class C is a typical RV uh, with the bunks over top the cab. It's like that big kind of shaky fiberglass box. Um, and those make a lot of noise and I'm not crazy about those. And then class B is a camper van. Basically, it's just a van that's been modded out with different amenities. And we knew that we wanted, uh, something that could drive really well. And we wanted a bed mm -hmm. and a kitchen mm -hmm. and a bathroom, a bathroom mm -hmm. and wheels. Mm -hmm. There you go. And so we found this class B and we were like, okay, this is great. Plus it gets pretty close to some of the bigger class Bs won't fit in a normal parking spot, but uh, some of the smaller ones will. Ours is just like maybe two, three feet longer than a normal parking spot. So that was great for like maneuverability. It's basically the biggest van that you can possibly imagine. It's a, it was a 2013 Winnebago era and it was built on a 2013 Mercedes Benz Sprinter van chassis. Uh, 23 feet, feet long, has dually tires in the back. Uh, it's a diesel engine, turbo diesel, in fact. That's the one we settled on. We got a really good deal on it, too, by the way. I was looking at the numbers. Do you remember what we paid for that for the all seven days? It was like somewhere in the vicinity of 1200 maybe. It was the total that we paid them was $859. That's not right. For seven days. That's what it says right here. It, they, only charged, they only charged us 600 bucks, and then... Uh, um, well, they were very kind. Yeah. Because it's worth more than that. Did we get charged? No, yeah, there you go. Look, I know. We got such oh, a good deal. I think that we rented that one because the base price was so cheap, but they charged for extra mileage, but then uh, he didn't end up charging us for the extra mileage. Uh, so like it would have, it was supposed it to be been. more. So, no. <laughs> no, let's include that. I mean, like this is up to you and in, in, in how outdoorsy operates. Right. It's up to you in like how much the security deposit is right. like seven days uh, before your trip yeah, but i feel bad well i mean they're supposed to do it it's just book bookkeeping on their end right okay. i didn't realize that yeah they should have charged us yeah. 700 more bucks yeah uh -huh. yeah <laughs> wow i'm just looking at that right now and then uh outdoorsy.com the, the best part about it was this is a kind that we had looked at before mm -hmm. like we had looked at an era before right and it just happened to be, there aren't very many on there, honestly, at least when we were looking. And it just happened to be someone that lived in Huntsville, you know, an hour and 15 minutes away from us. So that was really lucky. Yeah, yeah. They were super awesome. In yeah, fact, I awesome. just remembered, like, they gave us an extra day, yeah. basically. We picked it up on Friday to, to bring it home and pack it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Best decision we made. That was amazing. <laughs> I'll never forget that night. So Friday. I want to watch. <laughs> so Friday, I get done with work. Yeah, I do have some footage that we're going to be watching throughout this. And so if you're just listening, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to do our best to paint the picture. But yeah, Friday, we go and pick it up. And they were super cool with that. And they gave us the rundown of like how everything worked and all that stuff. Um, showed us how, how, you know, how to turn on the batteries, turn on the lights, how to turn on the shower, how to turn on the stove and how to empty the tanks and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, how outdoorsy works is like the owner of the camper van can decide how much to charge. If you go over on the mileage, they can, they give you a mileage allow allotment for each day. And then, um, from there, um, it looks like outdoors, you took like a hundred dollar fee, that kind of thing. And then, uh, a $500 security deposit is taken out. And then if you give the van back and it's still in good shape, you get that security deposit back. Just like, you know, that kind of normal thing. And then uh, it was diesel. So we had to fill up on diesel and just doing some rough math. Uh, we were getting about like 17, 18 miles per gallon. Um, and then 3000 miles. So yeah, 529 is what I'm getting on my numbers here. But like Rough numbers, five hundred, six hundred dollars worth of gas. So, but we drove three thousand miles. We drove across the continent of the United we drove States. More than three thousand miles. Oh wait, this is just rough numbers. Okay. So it was closer to four thousand miles. Uh, no, closer to thirty-five hundred. Okay. 
and we spent between six and seven hundred bucks on gas, right? Yeah, it felt like we were spending so much more than that on gas because of how many times we had to stop at gas stations. But that's, I guess, something it that we felt can talk like about. More and, than seven hundred dollars. Yes, because of how much time we spent in gas stations. It was really funny to drive home from like like leave their house with it. I felt like we were stealing it. You know, like who who gave us this? Why did they give us this? Is this going to come back in one piece? I mean, we're great drivers. Yeah, but like... And we're responsible. We're people. really responsible. Yeah, but still like this is... I mean, this is a home. Like... Yeah, this is like... Uh, like if we were to buy it... If we were to buy even that year, like a 2013... Yeah. It would be 65K. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To buy. So yeah. It was a very expensive piece of equipment that we were taking on the right. road. Um, and something like so valuable to us too, just like I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like, were so excited. We ended up packing like way too much, but it's, yeah, you know, it still worked out. It didn't look as big until we got it in our driveway, and then I'm just like, oh my gosh. So yeah, the storage on this thing was amazing. It had like overhead compartments, like an mm-hmm. airplane would, mm-hmm. and then had a fridge and it had a microwave. <laughs> we bought so much like big jugs of water. Yeah, and the yeah. Deer Park ones fit perfectly in the microwave. We Perfect loved storage. That. In, the, in the back is a queen size bed. Mm-hmm. It was bigger than a queen bed, it felt like. It, yeah. it felt bigger than our bed. I can't believe I'm going to sleep here for a week. It's going to be nice tonight. We packed way more than we needed. Yeah. I had so many pairs of clothes that I didn't even wear. Like a family could easily fit. Like parents, two kids. Totally, totally. Small kids, but. Yeah, yeah. But still, you could fit everyone's stuff in. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, you really could. Once you get good at it too, you go on a couple trips and you figure out like what you use and what you don't use. Roll those clothes. Roll those clothes. You got to roll <laughs> clothes for space. Oh my gosh, your hair is so short. Who is this that I'm with? Who am I, I know, going on this trip I know. with? <laughs> I look considerably younger and less frazzled and less aged in this video. Oh, that camo hat though. You look the same. No, I camo don't. Camo hats are cool. This great American road trip starts now. Who let us do this? Who let us do this? Welcome to Mississippi, birthplace of America's music. First state, first state, first state. It is so windy starting out it was so windy and i just was like oh gosh we've made a huge mistake (laughs) oh my gosh the wind was killer and then um some of our tires were flat so like that made it way more rocky (laughs) and i was just like this is terrible and then we drove for like six hours and then i went and checked the tire pressure and i was like oh my gosh filled it up went from like 40 pounds to like 80 pounds and i was like oh this is so much better do you remember me like struggling to fill up for the first time i do this to fill up gas yeah yeah i went to the truck stop gas Mm -hmm. those don't automatically stop on their own so gasoline just exploded everywhere diesel went everywhere and i started out the trip just reeking of diesel gas yeah and you're so like smell sensitive that i think it like drove you mad for the first few days you're just like i still smell like diesel (laughs) i'm very smell sensitive (laughs) i was like i don't smell anything but okay State number two, Tennessee. Tennessee. We are there. You are there. And cross the Mississippi and everything, and that was fun. Yeah, crossing the Mississippi was crazy because um, you were like, the country used to end here. Yeah, it did. That's nuts. I can't even like wrap my head around that. But that's as far as we had gotten, as far as like westward yeah. expansion. Yeah, but I see why that. I mean, I've seen the river before, but like. <laughs> How did we cross that? (laughs) And then headed into Arkansas. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, that is when we stopped for the first time for you to drive it. Yes. That went really good. That went no problem. You didn't freak out at all. (laughs) You knew I would. Just do a circle in the parking lot right here. Everything's okay. Just calm down. I'm just freaking out about the sun. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can do this. Okay. There you go. See, it's not too bad. I've never driven anything that big before. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a big. It's a twenty-three and a half foot van. Yeah. So it was. It was I mean, and it. I got used to it, but it's. 
It's bigger than it's and intimidating. Like, as far as like negotiating parking lots and stuff like that, you kind of just have to plan. You know how when you're in a car, you can just be like, "Oh, I'm gonna go here. Oh, I'm gonna go here." You know, mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter. You can yeah. pull in and sneak in anywhere when you're in a car. With a bigger vehicle like that, you just have to plan your steps ahead. You have to plan your in and you plan your out. And as long as I did that, it was fine. It yeah. was no problem. So you drove the van. That mm-hmm. was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, you flew the drone. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> it's crap. Uh, I will take, I will take any chance to fly the drone that I possibly can. You, um, you did a great job driving it, but for the whole trip, you didn't drive on the interstate. No, I'm, and I don't love the interstate anyway. I'll do it, but. Um, no, I didn't feel comfortable enough to to have to be switching lanes and all of that stuff. Like I and and I just always feel more comfortable on like a rural, <laughs> rural back road. I forgot how pretty that first sunset was. Mm-hmm. Even in Russellville. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say even in Russellville. Look, Russellville is lit. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disparaging Russellville at all. At this point in Arkansas, I, we had just done a full day, and I also stayed up like all night packing the packing the van, packing the fridge, hard boiling eggs, which you just ruthlessly made fun of me for. <laughs> because the next morning, I was like, I only slept three hours, and you were like, What are you? What were you doing? Why did you only sleep three hours? I was like, I was up all night. I had a lot to do. I was boiling eggs. <laughs> <laughs> just like you were boiling eggs. What does that even mean? Hard boiled eggs are great road trip protein mm-hmm. cells, I will say. What is that? That's Tulsa. Okay, that, so that's Tulsa. So we passed yeah. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Made our way across the Tulsa's state of Oklahoma. Tulsa is super cute. I have, I've been before. Tulsa is super cute, though. Highly recommend. And then we stopped <laughs> for our first night. Yeah. Outside of Outside of Tulsa. So we were going to stay at a uh, state park, but just because we got on the road real late, uh, the place ended up closing. So we're just in a Walmart. We're at Walmarts. I feel really weird. I feel really (laughs) weird. I need you to feel good. Oh, I feel great. We're fine. We're fine. We're totally good. We're going to be great. Are we locked? We're locked. And it was cold. Like, I remember... I mean, it was March. It was the end of March, so it was cold outside. It was it was pretty cold outside all throughout this trip, but we were super cozy. Yeah. I feel cozy. I'm going to have to pee in the van for the first time. First time to use the pee. <laughs> we're chilling out, watching Back to the Future. We're camped out in the Walmart parking lot, and it's the same Walmart where they found the lady <laughs> that had been in, no. the, in the bathroom. <laughs> D- dead for a while. When I googled this Walmart to see if overnight parking was allowed, it was just headline after headline of crime that happened here. <laughs> but we're so desperate. <laughs> so we're yeah, we're fine. Onward and upward tomorrow. And good morning. For breakfast every morning, we were able to cook on a cast iron skillet because the kitchen had two burners, two gas burners, and a functioning sink. And I cooked breakfast for you most mornings mm-hmm. in the van. We had good breakfasts. Yeah, you cooked, or you brought your cast iron, because <laughs> that was, I mean, you're still obsessed with it, but that was like in the new stages of the obsession, and so you brought the cast iron with you, which was actually clutch, because everything tastes better in that cast iron anyway, and it felt like we were at home. You made me coffee. What was the problem with this thing? The percolator. I guess that's what it's supposed to do. It's really just like a really super simple coffee brewer. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get one of these. So I bought one before the trip and screwed it up a little bit, but it's okay. Well, it was a learning curve, I think. And that was like the first morning that you had used it. Yeah. There was lots of coffee in our, in our coffee <laughs> oh, yeah. cups. There's lots of coffee grounds. <laughs> lots of coffee grounds. grounds, yeah. Oklahoma. Oh, our tandem bike on the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have we did have a tandem bike on the back. There's a bike rack on the back of the van, and we have a tandem bike because Aaron doesn't know how to ride a bike on her own. I can ride a bike on my own. I choose not to. <laughs> really a choice? <laughs> Is it really a choice? I can ride a bike. I have pictures to prove it, but... <laughs> you have Polaroids back when like Polaroids were new technology. 
No, we like riding the tandem bike. No, we do. And we do. You, uh, we love the tandem you bike. You got me that bike. Remember, you got me that bike on Valentine's Day. The Valentine's Last... Day before mm-hmm. the trip. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you knew yeah. that we wanted to take it. I do like the tandem bike. We can help each other. We can propel each other. We can talk to each other. We're right there. Mm-hmm. You're right there with me. Mm-hmm. And we're together. It is fun. I do like the tandem bike very much. It's very codependent. <laughs> It's not codependent. If there's a leader and a follower. <laughs> That's not how codependence works. No, it is. It's super fun. It's like a really, really, really like dorky thing that we do, but it is really fun. It's like been a fun bonding thing yeah. that we've done. On the trip there, we kind of went the northern route to the Grand Canyon, and then on the way back, we kind of went the southern route to the to back home. It was very nice because I'm very anti like backtracking. Yeah, yeah, driving on the same exact road, you just see the same exact stuff over and over again. So yeah, that worked out really well to kind of go north on the way there, and then kind of south through Texas on the way back. Great planning. You you planned all a lot of this stuff. So great job. You do a really good job. Well, I wanted to take you also to, because I've been to Durango the summer before in Southern Colorado, and I thought you would really love it, so I wanted to take you through there, too. I love planning routes. I'll do that all day. (laughs) As much as we crushed miles and drove and drove and drove, we also took a bunch of, like, side roads and by roads. And please look at how flat the state of Kansas is. I think it's beautiful, honestly. The music on the trip was awesome. In a quarter of a mile, turn left. (laughs) We kind of had like a couple songs become, because when you're on the road that long, Mm -hmm. we had a couple songs kind of become our theme songs. Um, and this is so corny, but Fleetwood Max. Oh gosh, I'm so embarrassed by this though. <laughs> wow. Fleetwood Max, Rihanna, and it's cooler than. <laughs> Rihanna is with the theme song. <laughs> no, what's the name of the song? Anywhere or something? Everywhere. Everywhere. It's a, it's a McVeigh song. McVeigh song. Excuse me, McVeigh is like the Timothy McVeigh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this was. But so that fun. became one of the themes of the trip. It really did. Yeah, I mean. It's ad- it's you know accurate wording. But. When you dr- when you drive right. eight hours a day, you're gonna get some repeats on the track list. Yeah. And then once a song comes up, and you're like, oh, this felt good the first time around, and it feels good this time. Yeah. It ends up being kind of a theme, and that ended up being the theme for this trip, which is super corny, and embarrassing. <laughs> awesome. The geography's starting to change. It's starting to get deserty and plateaui and stuff. Yeah, it's weird. To watch the landscape change is one of my favorite things ever. We got Birmingham, and it's like kind of mountainous and hill country yeah. and rolling hills or whatever. And then it flattens out, and then we ended up in the desert, and then we ended up mm-hmm. in snow. Mm-hmm. Like, we drove to snow. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Something weird just happened. All right, we're getting this warning light here. And so this is when I realized that we have a slow leak in our tires that is causing problems it's causing instability and it just it's killing our gas mileage and so everywhere we would stop to get gas i was also looking for a good air machine and that's when i realized that there are like seven functioning air machines in the entire continental united states because every gas station you go to something's wrong like the hose leaks or there's not a needle that was hugely frustrating and I feel like that killed us, like, mm-hmm. on time and efficiency. If you're ever in Dodge City and you need your tire changed, <laughs> come see this guy. No, we're out of Garden City. Oh, Garden City. Excuse yep. me. Hey, well, Gary helped me out here a ton. Thanks, man. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. But I just love how it's just such a small town kind of thing. Like, I'm not. this is not Dodge City. This is Garden City. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's not Pawnee, it's Eagleton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, speaking of Dodge City, we made it to Dodge City. We made it to Dodge City. 
I really wanted, I love old antique stores so much. Oh yeah, and there was that one antique store that you really wanted to go to, uh -huh. and then we realized like it closed earlier than we thought or something like yeah. that. And so you're having this huge meltdown. I'm just like, oh dear God, Lord, please let us make <laughs> us to this. Please let us make it to this antique mall because I, I don't know if I can be with this woman. Be positive. In the state of her you know, despair if we don't make it to this antique store. But we made it. <laughs> Checking out some cool antiques. I really like antique stores, and this was a very solid antique store. Creaky wood floor. Oh, like, yeah. Mm, it was. Really neat historical items here. Those were Mike Tyson's gloves. Arcade Fire once used this glockenspiel. Charles Manson played with this truck. If you're in Dodge City, come see. Boot Hill Antiques. Carrie and Jan, y'all are awesome. Thanks for staying open for us. Yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate y'all. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, man. man I really wanted to go to just a cool antique store and that was awesome. I could have spent hours, just punishingly long hours for you. <laughs> Once we finished up at the antique store in Dodge City, we then took the tandem bike for a ride around the city, which was super fun. And I actually have some audio here of you running into something that <laughs> was just like, checked all the boxes off of your list <laughs> of being kitsch. Yes. Oh, yes. Kitsch. Yes. What is kitsch? Just kitsch. Like, you know, just roadside Americana. Like, world's largest ball of twine or this figurine i just can't tell you how special this was to me <laughs> also also you... our stupid ass dogs <laughs> are just resting right now oh look at frank hey. he has his hackles up <laughs> hey leave your brother alone but in this moment mm -hmm. right now as we're driving around this gigantic statue figurine corny ball of mess that we're riding our bicycle in front of we're puncturing our tires. Mm -hmm. uh, so the car problems with the tires that we had are now bicycle mm -hmm. tires as problems as well. Mm -hmm. We didn't know it, so we kept riding around Dodge City, checked out the local brewery. That was cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, packed everything back up and hit the road <laughs> and got the heck out of Dodge. Oh, I think that's it. Way out there? Yeah. Yeah. Private property. Yeah. No trespassing. And then we went and saw Truman Capote's gravesite. No. <laughs> you thought I was serious. I could serious. kill you. You think I'm so stupid. You thought I was serious. <laughs> no, I'm just like a... So what did we go see? What did we go see? It was the house where the murders... Truman Capote wrote in Cold Blood, and it was the house where those murders happened the ones that he like profiled in in cold blood and it was really creepy actually is this where everything smelled like sulfur remember that oh yeah you remember that stretch of like there was yeah. like a three or four hour stretch i think it was like kansas or oklahoma where it just smelled like rotten eggs like it was air, kansas the yeah dust yeah just smelled like it's because of all the sulfur in the ground right yeah i guess yeah yeah, so that I didn't know that. There's a whole stretch of the country that just smells like sulfur. <laughs> really pretty, though. Yeah, super pretty. And I'm sure you go nose blind to that kind of thing eventually. I didn't notice it as much. I noticed it very I much. I promise it's outside of the car, not inside the car. And then we made it before sunset to colorful Colorado. Mm -hmm. And you and your mom from a road trip y'all took like last year, y'all have a picture by one of these colorful, wel <laughs> welcome to colorful Colorado signs. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is the same one where you and your mom were. And you're like, no, no, no. no. All the welcome to colorful Colorado <laughs> signs are the same. So I learned something. Then. <laughs> oh, that was really fun though. That was, that was a bit, I mean, when you reach Colorado, you're really in the West, you know? Yeah, you feel like you've, gone across the, the country right so in two full days of mm -hmm. driving not even a, like just one night mm -hmm. slept we made it to colorado yeah i can't believe that i can't believe that we'd only slept one night at this point i know and then we kept driving yeah because we had to because <laughs> we, had, we to. had to go to the grand canyon and back in seven <laughs> days 
That's the end of part one of this podcast. Part two comes out next week. We're going to drive through the Rockies, through Monument Valley, camp at the Grand Canyon, and then tackle the trip back home. For more episodes and all the links for this episode, go to Adler.tv. Please like and subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts, and I'll see you next week with part two and the conclusion of our RV adventure. See ya. Are you doing a thumbs up? No. Okay, good. Stop doing thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Too many thumbs Too up. Too many. But this is a thumbs up trip. Every picture.